Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing a math book and that is The Big Bang of Numbers, How to Build the Universe Using Only Math by Manal Suri. So I saw this on the new shelf in my library. I was intrigued. I love math. I studied math in college. So I was interested and decided to check it out without really knowing what I was getting into. As you can see, it's a decent sized book, but it seemed to have plenty of visuals. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I went in and wow, I'm glad that I did. So let's talk the big bang of numbers. Um, something that I find that I like to reiterate is that there's a difference between knowing math and being good at math and being good at communicating math to others. People who are math communicators, or let me back up, people who are good at math, people who maybe are people who you classically think of as mathematicians may not also have the skill to very clearly communicate math to other people who are not mathematically inclined. I think the skill of communicating math to people who don't have a math background or people who aren't as comfortable with math is a separate skill and one that I can really, really respect. I think it's the kind of skill that's necessary to be a math teacher. I think there is definitely a dearth of math teachers in the world or particularly in the country that I live in. I think a lot of people had a bad experience with math because they never had a good math teacher because to be a math teacher doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be good at math. Well, I think that probably is also required. You also need to be good at communicating math to people who do not have the background or skills at the moment that they're sitting in your classroom to understand the level of math that you do. And that is a different skill set whatsoever. And it's one that I think the author of this book, Manil Suri, has completely mastered. So Manal Suri, I'm not familiar with his math mathematic works. Um, it says he is a distinguished mathematics professor at the University of Maryland. So he is definitely good at math. He is a mathematician, but he also has that skill of a math communicator, which I think is a little bit harder to find. So the big bang of numbers, while it seems very intimidating, is for someone who has no previous math knowledge other than perhaps the uh, math that you acquired in your K through 12 education or your generic um, basic education as a child. But he does start at the very beginning, starting with literally building numbers. There is a quote on the back that says, Surrey takes us on a lighthearted journey all the way from nothing, zero to infinity. Math has rarely been so readable. He starts with assuming nothing. He doesn't even assume the numbers exist. And he slowly builds up this world of mathematics and the physical universe that mathematics can tell us um, or that mathematics can map to in the real world and makes it approachable, readable, and designed for all audiences, which is definitely something that not everyone can do and I can really respect. He's mindful that the target audience for his book is probably one that doesn't want to look at pages and pages of formula, which is why you're not going to find pages and pages of formula. Instead, there's very clear diagrams that he explains and things that keep the reader engaged and interested. He's not going to berate you or knock you over the head with pages of formulas without explanation. He's going to move very, very slowly and build things up from a ground level all the way up through the, the top, some of the more complicated topics in mathematics. And he does it in a way that he's not losing readers, even readers who maybe don't have that background in math or are typically intimidated by books that have titles like The Big Bang of Numbers. So I think this is a book that's very interesting and engaging and is accessible. That's kind of a key word when I'm looking for books on math is books that are accessible to a general audience, not just people who have specialized math skill or specialized math studies. So I think it's important for a math communicator to keep in mind the target audience of his book. And I think Manel really wants the target audience to be um, people who don't have a lot of math experience, people who maybe aren't familiar with mathematics and therefore he's communicating at that level and in a way that isn't condescending, but keeps it very, very interesting and will let you read the book and still be engaged throughout it. I read this book in two days and I read half of it, stopped and read the second half and it was very, very interesting. And I think that the author, Manal Suri, does a really good job of keeping my, um, my attention engaged throughout. I should also add that even if you do have a little bit more math background, maybe you studied at the college level, I think you can still take stuff away from this book. 
The first thing is the notes section in the back. There's an extensive notes section, which has tons of additional resources. If anything that you read sounds interesting, you can go to the notes and get more specialized information on that topic that was interesting to you. So that's where I went to look at a lot of stuff and see if there was anything in the notes section that I wanted to pursue further. Or just if you read it without having a more specialized knowledge, if you say, I wanna know more about that. The notes section in the back is very entertaining. For one, it's not dry. It's not a dry recitation of just facts and lists. It's actually entertaining to read in its own right and will point you in the direction of additional resources that you may want to pursue. The second thing that I took away, which is something I had never seen before, was the section was in the section on non-Euclidean geometry. Now I actually did take a non-Euclidean geometry course. I wonder if I still have the book on my book. Well, I do have the book, but I don't think it's on my bookshelf right now. I think it's in one of my totes or my storage container, but I took a non-Euclidean geometry course and I know that those words right away just lost a lot of people who didn't have any experience with math. Maybe people who didn't like geometry when they took it in um, their K through 12, their high school education, geometry wasn't their jam, or they're thinking, well, we learned Euclidean geometry. What do you mean there's non-Euclidean geometry? And I think it can definitely come across as intimidating. The non-Euclidean geometry that I took definitely got more in the weeds. I was in a mathematics course to get a degree in mathematics. So I was definitely expected to learn things at a little higher level. However, in this book, now to be fair, Manil Suri does credit the woman that he kind of took this information from, so he doesn't just steal the information, I want to make that clear, but he references uh, Professor Diana Taimina, Taimina? Um, she's a Latvian mathematician, I'll put her name in the information down below, who clearly explains these concepts of non-Euclidean geometry using crocheting, and I feel like this this shows another skill or another person who has that good math communication skill where they're able to communicate these more complex topics in a way that's very, very understandable. I spent a lot of time in the first couple of weeks of my non-Euclidean geometry course really trying to understand this non-Euclidean geometry and wrap my mind around it. And if I had had this book and if I had read that, read that section where they talked about crocheting versus uh, and how it ties in with non-Euclidean geometry, which I'm not going to go entirely into, I'm going to leave you to read the book and figure it out. It would have been way more, I would have learned it a lot quicker. It would have been way more accessible. I would have understood the concepts a lot quicker than the way that I muddled through it. And I think that both that professor had developed a really good way to communicate this to students, but it also makes these topics that seem really airy and out there understandable to the average person and tie it with something that they may be more familiar with, i.e. crocheting. So I think that this book really demonstrates a uh, mathematician who also has the skill in math communication and it's incredibly enjoyable it's humorous it's a great read and i highly highly recommend this is a really good book on mathematics i think it should be read by anyone who just has yeah any any interest in maybe touching back into the world of mathematics maybe someone who hasn't been in the world since high school they haven't really done a lot with math other than like adding and subtracting to get their budget all balanced but Maybe you want to dive back in and see what all this stuff is about. Maybe you're just curious about how non-Euclidean geometry ties in with crocheting and you want to know what that connection is. I can highly recommend this book and I think it is a uh, great thing for anyone to read. If you have any thoughts on this book, if you have read The Big Bang of Numbers or you have anything you would like to add, please put it in the comments below. I love to hear your comments on these books and I love to get book recommendations. I really do try to get to all the books that you are recommending me. So please recommend any books that you think I would like that are in this genre that I have just read. I would love to hear about it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.